All right, today you're getting a look inside my work world. That is a tax booth in the mall. Uh, it's slow today, and uh, figured out we'd uh, get out a video. I missed the last card, and uh, let's make sure we uh, we don't miss this time. First fight. This is the Vitor Belfort Kelvin Gastelum card. It will be Gareth McCollin versus Paulo Enrique de, uh, Costa. I honestly do not know enough about Enrique to uh, cost it to really make an educated pick, but I will say that I don't feel Gareth McLennan is UFC material, so this feels like they're trying to get someone over. Um, so we'll go with the Brazilian, but uh, I really could not say. Uh, Ronnie Jason, Ronnie Mariano Bezeja versus Jeremy Kennedy. Jeremy Kennedy... Uh, is at his own weight class now. Um, his debut in the UFC was at 155, which was not where he fits. Uh, featherweight is a much better fit for him. Uh, Ronnie Jason is, honestly, I've always thought of him as more of a bantam weight, despite the fact that, you know, he has fought his entire UFC career at featherweight. Um, I'm going with Ronnie Jason. He's a bit more well rounded, whereas Kennedy's kind of like a little bit of a one chick grinder. He wants to, you know, get in close, take you down, be on top of you. But Ronnie Jason's got, you know, really, really solid BJJ. Actually pretty good at stopping takedowns. Pretty good in the Muay Thai department on the feet. Um, taking him by decision. Um, probably because, honestly, it'll be the more exciting fight if he does win. Uh, Michael Brazeris versus Josh Berkman. This is a terrible fight. Why do either of these guys have a job? Uh, I mean, uh, uh, Prezeris, I guess, deserves another run in the UFC, but why does Bertman still have a job? Oh. Uh, Prezeris, decision. Uh, yeah. Ugh, I, I don't watch that one. Uh, Ronnie Yaya, Joe Soto. Uh, I'm going with Joe Soto here. He's let me down a lot in the past. I honestly thought after his uh, performance against CJ Dillashaw that he had made some real strides and was going to become um, not a title contender or anything, but a kind of mainstay of the Bantamweight division, and it's not really happened. But against Ronnie Jason, or Ronnie, <laughs> Ronnie Jason, who we had early in the fight card, Ronnie Yaya, you're dealing with a guy who is a phenomenal grappler, but not particularly athletic, not particularly gifted on the feet. Takedowns are... Not terrible, but not not great. Um, Soto, a good grappler in his own right, a, a pretty good wrestler. For a guy who's known as a grappler, not a bad stand-up artist. Sprawl and brawl, I, I see him being able to pull this out by a unanimous decision. He's also a ton more athletic than Yaya, who just doesn't really have a lot of great speed, a lot of great explosives, uh, explosiveness, which is kind of key in the division. Sergio Mariah's Davi Ramos. Uh, should be a really, really good grappling affair, to be honest. Uh, I got Marias probably winning it out. He is a little bit more in the uh, department of um, having the ability to fight on the feet. Uh, very athletic guy, very strong. Uh, Ramos is a tremendous grappler, but shouldn't be able to get a really easy sub. Um, it's an interesting fight. Uh, Taking Marias by decision. Kevin Lee versus Francisco Chinaldo. This one I had to think about for a bit. I mean, Chinaldo is like, uh, quite fantastic. Uh, in recent fights. Um, his stand-up is improving by leaps and bounds. He's very athletic, very strong, uh, you know, explosive for an older guy in the weight class. Uh, a, a pretty good grappler in his own right, but Kevin Lee, he's looked really impressive lately too. Uh, really good wrestler. Boxing's coming along. And uh, we'll take him by decision here. Although finishing Trinaldo would not be unthinkable. But Trinaldo has never been stopped by strikes, and Lee doesn't have, like, absolute uh, chin destroying power. Moving on up, Tim Means, Alex Oliver. This is a rematch. I picked Oliver the first time, but frankly, we, we, we've now, I think, seen what Oliver looks like when he just doesn't have a, a tremendous size and strength advantage over you. And it's not good. Um. Taking Tim Means, taking him to TKO him because that first fight before the the illegal knee caused a uh, the DQ um, was really going Tim Means' way. So Tim Means, uh, Marion Rowe versus Betch Cohea. I'm going with Renault by decision. 
two girls who have been in the division for a while. Renault's just a little bit cleaner technical in all aspects of the game. Kohea, younger but not a lot. The, uh, to be honest, the, uh, the trash talk for this fight has been, has been bad. Um, it's like kind of centered around Kohea not being anything special and Renault talking about Kohea calling her an old woman and like things that, things that kind of devalue your opponent. And I'm never really a fan of that. I'm never really a fan of that kind of trash talk. Plus it doesn't really make any sense. Neither of these guys are really what you would call anything special. Uh, neither of these ladies uh, particularly stand out in one area or another. Uh, Renault is pretty athletic for the division, but not like not light the world on fire athletic. Um, they haven't achieved a particularly large chunk. Um, they have no supremely um, notable wins uh, between them. Both have lost their, their kind of moment in the sun, uh, in the case of Kohea to Rousey, in the case of Marion Rio to Holly Holm. Uh, and in terms of the age, neither of them are like particularly young. I think the age of the app was like, according to Renault, like four years. So that part didn't make any sense. But Renault by decision, a little cleaner technique. Uh, both girls are actually quite well-rounded, which is a bit strange for the Bantamweight division, which tends to feature more specialists, but should be good. Jose Formiga De Silva versus Ray Borg. Going with De Silva, but man, Borg could, Borg could surprise me. I, I, I thought Luis Smolka would beat him, and, and he, he, he handled business. Um, so I could be totally wrong, but Formiga has probably the better stand-up of the two. And when you give him the better stand-up advantage and the fact that he's, he's very good on the ground, uh, difficult to take there as well, it's, it's a recipe for a fight that he should be able to win. Uh, Borg can't trouble him enough on the feet, I think, really to set up his takedowns properly and really be able to handle a guy who's a very good grappler in uh, Formiga. So I'm going with Formiga here by decision, but man, Ray Borg could surprise. He, he's pretty fantastic. Uh, Edson Barbosa versus uh, Benil Dariush. I'm taking Edson Barbosa by TKO. Um, Dariush has some defensive liabilities that I think can definitely be utilized. Um, he has been stopped by strikes. Barbosa is a, a fantastic striker. I don't think he has the chin, the wherewithal, and the ability to walk through Barbosa at range to trouble Barbosa inside, which has historically been the place to take Edson Barboza. So, taking Barboza by TKO, but if this goes to the ground, Dariush is fantastic, good wrestler, good grappling. He definitely has an avenue to victory. I just don't know if he necessarily has the striking defensive tools to take it there. Uh, Shogun Hua, Mauricio Shogun Hua versus Gian Vellante. Shogun did not look good in the Corey Anderson fight, but he also didn't get steamrolled the way I thought he would. And Volante is not as good as Anderson at the areas of the game he needs to be. Not as good of a wrestler. Not as good of a grappler. Better striker, but seems to get bored in fights, moments of inactivity, uh, moments of lack of uh, focus. And Shogun's a wily veteran that you just... You cannot do that against and win. I don't necessarily think he'll finish Volante, although Volante is very finishable, but... Yeah, this, this is kind of weird in that at this point in time, Volante is a a much better athlete and complete fighter than Shogun. I think that just his fight IQ problems keep him from being able to win a fight like this. So, I mean, we are talking about a guy who lost to uh, the TV, which was like a tailor-made matchup for him to win and like losses to Tom Lawler. It's, Volante is like utter gicked. Territory. I, I can't. Guy, I cannot trust. Uh, Vitor Bell for Kelvin Gas. Um, until I see the old Vitor Bell for come out against someone that is not Dan Henderson. <laughs> um, I don't know if I can pick him. I mean, Gastelum really is a welterweight. He needs to get his weight under control, see if he can go back down there. It's a weight cut he should be able to make, unless there's something we don't know. 
but he's fast, he's explosive. When you can out-explode Vitor, he's always had problems, and I think Gastelum can. I think he is faster. I think he is more athletic. His stand-up is really sharp, although people, I think, made a bigger deal about that against Tim Kennedy than was really warranted because there was... There was some things about that fight that honestly were more about Kennedy's inability to do things than Gastelum being really, really sharp. Uh, but he is a sharp boxer with a good wrestling game that he can utilize. Vitor is still reasonably explosive, still very powerful. Puncher's chance for sure, but particularly in a five-rounder, I just don't see it. I see, I see Gastelum getting a third or fourth round TKO here. Uh, taking the fight, or or a, uh, a rear naked choke would also be possible. Although Belfour, despite the fact that his black belt is somewhat overblown, is a good grappler, is a very hard guy to submit. So, but I could see him getting rocked and then submitted. So, that's my thoughts on the card. Usual links down below, and uh, I don't know. It's it's a free card, so I'm not gonna not gonna terribly complain about it. We got a good pay per view the other week, uh, although the main event was bad, um, and of course we lost the Habib versus Tony fight, which probably is lost to obscurity with problems there. Um, I'll probably go back to reading about the John War Machine Copenhaver trial, which his comments are very interesting with. Uh, kind of two things some level of victim blaming which there's something to be said just on a, as an aside on Christy Max probably needing to change what she looks for in men because apparently her boyfriend directly after John Coppenhaver looked a lot like John Coppenhaver not, not saying he was the same but she definitively has a type and seems to stick with it when things are going badly. This doesn't mean that she deserved this or that people were saying, well, why didn't you leave him? It's a complex issue, but it's one that I'm just, I'm just gonna throw out there, probably need some help with. And the other part of it that's really confused me is people are like angry at the lawyers for like trying to use the Christy Mack as a porn star defense. They tried to convince him to play guilty and he didn't do it and they have no other defense and the American justice system is built on the idea that everyone gets a defense I what other card do they have um, is my point so there's no there's no point to get you, you cannot believe the defense but there's no point to be like angry that it's being used because what other defense is there like if we're if we're going on this truth here this is what would happen in that the court of law uh, the defense rests. But you haven't even presented your case yet. We, we don't have one. <laughs> that, that would be it. I'm sorry. Anyways, hopefully we, hopefully this card delivers a little bit more than I'm kind of thinking it will. Um, there's some really good fights. I'm, I, I, grappling fans, I think we should be looking forward to Marias versus Ramos. I think Barboza Dariush could be good. I think Borg versus... Uh, Formiga is a good fight. I think Kevin Lee versus Francisco Ronaldo, that could be a good fight. Um, Prezeris versus Bergman is going to be absolutely terrible, but uh, I mean, it's what it is. I would have put Bergman in there with someone who would just like knock him out and send him out and build kind of a name because he's got a bit of name value. Prezeris is not that guy. All right. So enjoy and uh, catch you on the next one.